Good everyone, it is your favorite tutor, and today is your favorite tutor on physics. All right, continuation from where we stop. Remember, in our previous class, we discussed about potential difference and electronic force. Okay, today we'll be talking about factors affecting the electrical resistance of a conductor. Resistance that means we are talking about opposition to the flow of what current in a conductor. But in our previous class, I told you guys that all materials have what resistance. All materials have resistance. Now, factors that affect electrical resistance in a conductor. The first on our list is what nature of what material. Talking about the nature of material, we are talking about the kind of material in which is used to conduct what electricity. The kind of material. Like, for example, we have the, the silver wire and the what, copper wire. The silver wire takes, the conductivity in the silver wire is very high, while the conductivity in the copper wire is just high. So the conductivity in the copper wire is high, while the conductivity in the silver wire is very high. So the kind of material matters a lot. That, that's one of the factors that affect electrical resistance. The nature of the material. Number two is um, length of the what? Conductor. Okay. The resistance is directly proportional to the what? Length of the conductor. So it means that if the conductor, for instance, the wire is very long, that means if the length increase, the resistance will do what? Increase. That is what it means by directly proportional to each other. If the length increases, the resistance will do what? Increase. Okay, number three says the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area, we are talking about the thickness of the conductor. That is the thickness of the wire. The resistance is inversely proportional to the what? Cross-sectional area. Inversely proportional. That means if the area, the cross-sectional area, increase, the resistance will do it, decrease. That is what it means by inversely proportional to each other. Okay, right here, temperature. The resistance is directly proportional to what? The temperature. If the temperature increases, resistance will do what? increase all right now that we have all this in place please you can just put it and take a note of all these things very very important all right but to satisfy ohm's law to satisfy ohm's law temperature must be kept constant the temperature must be kept constant and if the temperature is kept constant the resistance will be what Right? is directly proportional to length and also inversely proportional to what? Area. The resistance directly proportional to length also inversely proportional to the word area. Okay? We remove the word proportionality symbol. If we remove the proportionality symbol, we impute a constant. That constant is the resistivity of the material. So therefore, the resistor is equal to what? The resistivity length over what? Area. Now this is our equation for what? Resistance. This is the required equation. The resistance is equal to what? Resistivity length over what? Area. That is the product of the resistivity and length divided by what? Area. Okay, the resistance as we all know, is calculated in what? Ohms, measured in ohms. Length, measured in meter. Area, of course, meter square. And the resistivity is what? Ohms, meter. The unit for resistivity is what? Ohms, meter. It's a derived unit. It's a derived unit from this equation. From this equation, this equation that we have here, resistance is equal to what? Resistivity length over what? Area. If we make the resistivity subject formula, 
let us make recivity subject one and that recivity is equal to what? The resistant area over what? Met. So therefore, the recivity is equal to what is the unit for resistance? Ohms. Unit for area is what? Meter square. And the unit for length is what? Meter. So meter we cancel out meter. So what we have here, resistivity is equal to what? Ohms meter. Now this is how we get the what the unit for what it just derived. Just what we do, we make from this required equation, make recidivity subject formula. Then we have the what the unit. Very simple. As we are talking about what resistivity, let us not forget the conductivity aspect of the material. Yes, the material has the ability to resist. To, to oppose the flow of current. But the material also has the ability to do what? Conduct electricity. It means that there is also what? Conductivity. It resists and also do what? Conducts. So therefore, conductivity, conductivity is what? The inverse of what? Resistivity. Conductivity is the inverse of what? Resistivity. Therefore, conductivity is what? One all over what? Resistivity. And is measured, is measured in what? Per ohms meter. Per ohms what meter because resistivity is what ohms meter. That's one over what? Ohms meter. That is something as what per ohms meter. Or ohms meter raised to the power of what? Minus one. So this is what unit for what? Conductivity. Okay, I have a question on the board. All right, let us take a look at this question and then we'll solve it together. Okay. All right. It says, calculate the resistance. Solution. It says, calculate the what? The resistance of a conductor. Length two meter with a radius of cross section of one point five meter. If the resistivity of the wire is three times ten raised to the power of minus eight ohms meter. Okay, actually, what we are looking for right here is the resistance. That is what actually what we are looking for. Okay. You know what? We continue and then we just forget about the noise. Let's just continue. Okay. All right. We are actually looking for the word resistance. It says calculate the word resistance. So we're looking for resistance. Okay. Of a conductor of length. We have length is what? Two meter. While the radius, the radius of section is 1.5. Meter and the resistivity, resistivity is what three times ten to the power minus two ohms meter. Okay, we are looking for what resistance. Okay, I like this side of the board. All right, from this equation, the required equation, resistance. Is equal to what? Passivity length over what? Area. All right, just stay with me. Forget about the noise, eh? Okay, so therefore, resistance is equal to resistivity. What? Okay, wait, 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 wait. All right, we have resistivity, we have length, but we don't have the area. Okay, can you see what I'm saying? We have resistivity, we have length, but we don't have the area. For what, what we have here right here. All right. Okay, but we have what? Radius of cross section. Radius of what? The cross section. And if you repeat from what we have right here, the cross sectional area is also part of what? The factors that affect resistance and the radius of the cross sectional area. The radius of the cross sectional area, this is what we have right here, is 1.5. Where is radius found? 
finally what circle it means that the cross-sectional area is circular in nature so therefore we take the words the area of a word circle so we have what the resistivity we have the resistivity length all over what the area is going to be area of the word circle which is r radius square all right we have our required equation for this question this is the required equation for this question so therefore the resistance is equal to resistivity is what three times ten raised to the power of minus two times what two all over pi pi is 3.142 times we have radius radius is 1.5 raised to the power of what two 1.5 raised to the power of 2, that is what, okay? So, the resistance will be, all right, the numerator, the numerator will be 0 0.06, while the denominator will be 0 0.07, okay? So, therefore, the resistance is going to be 8.5 times 10 raised to the power of Minus three. Minus three words in ohms. So this is the words, the answer to the question. 8.5 times there is about minus three words ohms. Thank you and God bless you. I remember your favorite writer. Please subscribe to the channel. God bless you as you